Well, look who's here. He was grimacing, as we say, whilst he was listening to your discussion of... Uh, of uh, I might have video. felt it. I might have felt the vibe this way. Put him on the air. Put him on the screen. <laughs> this is David uh, Barnson, I believe is his name. So what do you think? Of, I mean, does this remind you of the dot-com bubble? Of course it does, and it's not about dot-com. What happened during the dot-com bubble was there were a lot of worthless companies that went way up and then they went away. Pets.com, those yeah. old Super Bowl commercials. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, because NVIDIA is a very profitable company and a big company, but like Cisco and Microsoft and Intel in 1999, they went way, way up, priced in 30 years of gains in five minutes, and then they spent 16 years not going up at all. And by the way, Cisco still isn't back to where it was in 1999. That's exactly what's happening in NVIDIA. I have no idea what it's going to stop. But the, coming, someone like Dan Ives saying it's got another trillion of market cap to go, that's the kind of thing that marks the moments where we're going to look back and go, boy, what were we thinking? And I don't know if it's in a week, a month, or a year, but it's going to happen. And you heard it here first on Varney and Co. on Fox Business. Actually, there are others who said exactly the whole thing. But not right now, today. <laughs> not today. This <laughs> on very the moment. longest day of the year. He's just being technical. That's all it is, Bronson. All right, David, stay right there. You're with me for the hour. You lucky guy. David Bonson with us. The big tech rally continues. Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't have a problem with it. It's just very um, important for people to understand that index investors now thought they were diversifying with 500 companies, and they more or less own three or four companies. <laughs> you could argue it's seven or eight, but it's really the highest concentration in history of how much are in 10 companies, seven, five, you three. You think that's a problem? The oh, concentration, it's a big problem. you think, is a problem? It's a big problem because it all helps you when the momentum is one way, and when the momentum reverses, it can, it can escalate very quickly the other direction. Okay, you're with me for the hour, so a lot more to come. Thank you. Do you think that the concentration of, uh, of, uh, of money going into big tech, is that a problem for the overall market? Uh, it's going to be a huge problem eventually. Uh, I listened to David Bonson earlier. Call me a Bonsonite on this, uh, in that uh, we have studied every bull and bear market, especially the extremes. In extreme bear markets, you can pick things up at ridiculously cheap, and just a norm normalcy gets you making good money. And in the top of big extreme bull markets, you get the opposite. What's your comment on what Gary had to say? I appreciate Gary's kind words. I agree with him entirely. The uh, action from 95 to 99 is instructive. My only uh, word of advice is I don't think it's going to be very easy to time the exit. I'd rather be early than late in the exit. This was an extensive investigation by The Wall Street Journal. Seven months of testing um, on the content that Instagram is pushing to minors. Think 13 years old. And they found that within minutes of logging on, those kids are being shown racy and sexualized content. All social media companies are under fire, and they say, yeah, we have this teen, clean content. Um, but in, in reality, their algorithms might be pushing who knows what. All right. You got a comment? I would suggest that they have a very different standard of what I consider clean than they do. <laughs> you leave it at that. Yes, You're because it's, right. because it, they're wrong. It, they, this stuff is getting to teenagers, and it's disgusting. Whenever I buy a stock, I want either a capital gain or a big dividend. I don't think I get either with Kroger. I don't think. David, do that unexciting. Um, it, it, it is unexciting now, but this Albertsons deal is a good deal, and the FTC has no basis to deny it. But they will deny it. Uh, well, but, then, bad. but then they end up losing in court. That's what keeps happening with the FTC. Yeah, it takes all this time to get yeah, through that's it. Right. That's right. I saw this report that Ferrari is going to come out with the all-electric vehicle. Yep. Um, I don't know when it's I think it's 2026, I think it's coming The out. end of next year. And look at the stock. It's gone up again. But that thing must cost a fortune. <laughs> it's almost funny to say the base price is $535,000. Five hundred thirty-five thousand. Base price. Base. Oh well, Biden should demand that consumers <laughs> buy it. That should be like like middle income people should have to buy it, right? I mean, Absolutely. Okay. But it's an electric. The ultra rich can afford that. No big deal. I get it. But then you you cement the EV market as being the market for rich. But that's five hundred thirty-five thousand for a Ferrari electric vehicle that can go about half a mile, and then it has to be recharged. <laughs> You're being sarcastic. I am being sarcastic. And it loses uh, depreciation like yeah. instantaneously. Investors like it. Look, the stocks are four hundred dollars a share. It's up three dollars today. Because it's exclusive. It's hard to get. There's going to be a really long wait list, and that makes you even cooler. What do you think it takes to make list. you super rich? Oh, hundred million, two hundred million. Super rich, 100 million. Uh, David? Um, I think it is defined by how oh, long lives their life. <laughs> it give is, us a number. I'll give you a number. It's about the income you generate from your net worth. What's the number? 
Uh, I think a minimum of 50 million to be considered super rich. Got it. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, <laughs> scroll up because I don't want any more script about Ferrari. Dell and Supermicro, they're looking to help power Elon Musk's AI advancements. What's that all? And they're telling us about it. It used to be like secretive and now they're letting it all out. So Elon Musk says they're supplying the racks for his XAI supercomputer to power the next generation of their chatbot, Grok. Supermicro is up 320% in the past 52 weeks. Good Lord. 320%. A, a big sigh from David here. What, yeah, what could go wrong? We've never seen anything like this before. No, you're sighing because you missed it. No, I'm not, because we don't chase this stuff. It's not what we do. We buy companies, not stocks. I get what you're saying, but that isn't the case. But let me say this. You cannot be encouraged by seeing everyone pile into these things indiscriminately. It's impossible that they're all going to win out. So at least the NVIDIA argument was that they're going to beat everybody out. But not everyone can be having this happen at once. And even the top of the food chain, it's gotten way out of control. That quickly, they fall hard. It's just a fact. Okay. You know what we all wait for when you appear on this program? I do. Your dividend picks. Yeah. And you're going to start with a real good one. That will be Blackstone, of which I own a thin sliver. Yes, you own a little piece of it. I know the person who recommended it to you many years ago. And when it, well, I recommended it, Stuart, it was about $20, paying 8%. Now people look at the dividend and they go, oh, it's only 4%, except for they've grown the dividend 400%. It's just simply that the stock has gone up so much. Sitting here at 123 right now, Blackstone is the leader in hedge funds, credit, real estate, and the world. In the, uh, let's see now, 13 years we've owned the stock. They have become a gold standard on Wall Street for asset management. But you like stocks which pay a, a growing dividend. And, and that's will why Blackstone, we love Blackstone. Will they, Black, grow it from here? Absolutely. They grow it year over year. They've averaged since we bought it double-digit annual growth of the dividend. We'll take that. Johnson & Johnson. You talk about uh, annual dividend growth since World War II. Uh, the dividends grow every single year. And I noticed the stock down 145. You're back in a 3.5%. The dividend's often been in the twos, but it's down about $20 or so from where it was. So some of these names, as the market has gone up, mm -hmm. have gotten cheaper. Johnson Johnson's one of them. This is a high-quality name that you can buy $20 cheaper than you could a few months ago. And yields? It yields uh, about 3.5% and it's grown every single year. Got it. Thanks, Just David. Indeed. David Barnson, listening to all of this, uh, should migrants be allowed to work? Let me make a point that 46 million foreign-born people in the United States are here legally. Yep. And so that's in the data there. So we can't know if it's 100,000 that are all the illegal migrants. That's true. Your question is, should the illegal migrants be allowed to work? And my answer is, as a person of tremendous compassion, and I sort of have a soft spot on this issue... Um, I would like to say yes, but we can't now because there's no trust, no credibility. They didn't protect the border. Now it's out of control. Ideally, I'd like the people that want to come here to come here legally. And yes, for this, there to be jobs for them. That's not where we are right now. Got it. David Barnson, thank you very much, sir. And David, thank you for joining us for the hour. We always appreciate it. Thanks yeah. very much. Uh, still ahead.